Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'll be sharing my time with the member from Edmonton Centre. It's a great privilege for me to stand today to speak about Bill C-44, the Protection of Canada from Terrorists Act. As we have heard in these debates, this bill includes amendments to the CSIS Act and technical amendments to the Strengthening Canadians, Canadian Citizen, Citizenship Act. My remarks today will focus on the amendments to the CSIS Act and why we must take steps to give this vital agency the tools it needs to conduct investigations outside of Canada related to threats to the security of Canada itself. First, I would like to speak to the global terrorist threat, its impact here at home, and steps Canada is taking to address that threat. Acts of terror and murder have been carried out across the globe by extremist groups who have no regard for the lives of innocent people. In fact, as we all witnessed in the past weeks, Canada was the victim of two terrorist attacks within the span of one week. Due to radical Islamic, Islamist terrorism, we lost two fine soldiers, Corporal Nathan Cirillo and Warrant Officer Patrice Vincent, who, were, who was laid to rest this past weekend. Terrorists kill people from all walks of life, including people from communities they claim to represent. Significant work has been done over the last decade, and particularly since September 11, 2001, to counter terrorist activities. Canada has been a leader in global counterterrorism efforts. We have seen citizens and civil society organizations representing people of all faiths and beliefs work amongst themselves and with our government to prevent terrorism by building stronger and more resilient communities. All of these measures, Mr. Speaker, are captured within the four pillars of Canada's counterterrorism strategy. Prevent, detect, deny, and respond. And that strategy will serve us well on the difficult road we face ahead as our Canadian Armed Forces engage in a campaign to degrade and destroy the threat that ISIL poses to Western civilization. And they are a threat to Western civilization, Mr. Speaker. Indeed, our security agencies have been monitoring groups like Al Qaeda and ISIL closely for years. And we have taken concrete measures to disrupt and prevent violent and extremist activities. This takes a comprehensive approach. While we join our allies in airstrikes, we are also taking other measures that are working to isolate ISIL, denying them and their partners resources, including funds and new recruits. Let me explain. As we know, terrorists need money, media access, weapons and explosives, among other resources, to sustain themselves. We want to make sure that all groups that would assist terrorist organizations are restricted from doing so. Preventing terrorists from using the global financial system to commit their acts of terror is essential to help suppress these groups. Therefore, we have certain provisions under the Criminal Code that we can use to deal with the assets and operations of groups that support terrorist activities. Listing an entity under the Criminal Code is a public means of identifying a group or an individual as being associated with terrorism. It carries significant consequences, Mr. Speaker. Once listed, an entity's assets are frozen and may be subject to seizure, restraint, or forfeiture. Further, it is an offence for Canadians at home or abroad to knowingly, to knowingly participate in or contribute to, directly or indirectly, any activity that facilitates the activities of a listed terrorist entity. We know that terrorist groups are inspiring Westerners, some Westerners to take up arms with their cause. In order to reach these individuals and guard against these tactics, we work closely with diverse communities, including through the Cross-Cultural Roundtable on Security. We are working with leaders in communities right across the country to help engage Canadians in a long-term dialogue on matters related to national security, particularly in uh, countering violent extremism. Through the Roundtable, Mr. Speaker, we have reached out to hundreds of respected cultural and religious leaders who have their finger on the pulse of their communities. These le leaders have been integral in helping law enforcement and security agencies to address threats and identify the best ways to reach individuals who may be leaning towards violent behavior and redirect them from pathways of radicalization leading to violence. However, the rapid changes in technology, Mr. Speaker, the ease of communications and mobility of terrorist travelers have created new and complex challenges for Canada and all of our allies as we work to keep our citizens safe. Like other countries, despite everyone's best efforts, 
A small but significant number of individuals have left Canada to join terrorist groups in the Middle East. Denying ISIL its new recruits also means using Canadian law to crack down on these so-called extremist travellers. We brought forward the Combating Terrorism Act to make it an offence to leave Canada to take part in terrorist acts. We have laws in place to revoke the passports of Canadians who travel abroad to join extremist groups. Both the Prime Minister and the Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness have stated clearly that our government will continue to look at ways to help our national security agencies to investigate and track the activities of terrorists at our borders and beyond. And one of these ways is the legislation that is before us today to amend the existing CSIS Act so that we are better able to provide CSIS with the tools it needs to investigate threats to the security of Canada wherever they are, occur and ultimately to protect the security of Canadians. It is important to note that the CSIS Act was created three decades ago and that was in the age of rotary phones when our world was under the shadow of the Cold War. This Act is in need of updates, Mr. Speaker, and upgrades that will confirm CSIS authority to investigate Canadian extremists and other threats abroad. That is why I urge this House to support the bill that is, that is before us today. The Protection of Canada from Terrorist Act will confirm that, one, CSIS has the authority to operate outside Canada when investigating threats to the security of Canada or conducting investigations for the purpose of security assessments, and two, the federal court has the authority to issue warrants authorizing CSIS to conduct activities outside of Canada without regard to the laws of other states. This new legislation will also reinforce CSIS's statutory authority to investigate threats abroad and ensure that judges would only need to consider relevant Canadian law, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms and the CSIS Act, and not foreign laws when issuing a warrant. Mr. Speaker, clearly there are a number of ways our government protects the safety and security of Canada against terrorism. But first we must ensure that we have the right tools in place for our security intelligence agency to do so. There is no time to waste. We must amend the CSIS Act and allow this vital agency to continue its work. And I urge members of, of this House to join me in supporting this bill. Thank you very much. Uh, questions and comments? Question and comment? L'Honorable Deputy de Marc Farrell for time. Monsieur le Président, mon vieux prof de géostratégie m'avait dit qu'un acte terroriste, c'était un acte de violence ou d'intimidation dans un but politique, religieux, euh, social, structuré, puis trois, qui avait un, une symbolique qu'on cherchait à se démarquer. Et entre autres, il avait sorti une citation célèbre, c'est que le terrorisme et les médias vivaient une relation incestueuse. Alors, et il y avait un élément d'exclusion, exclu toute motivation essentiellement personnelle. Cela veut dire, Monsieur le Président, qu'un tireur fou s'en va dans une tour puis commence à tirer tous les gens parce qu'il n'est pas content, parce qu'un juge a ordonné qu'il perdait la garde de ses enfants, ce n'est pas un acte de terrorisme. C'est dangereux, il cause beaucoup de victimes, mais il sera puni en vertu du code criminel, à savoir meurtre prémédité. Et mon distingué confrère, à ce niveau-là, quand il dit « la définition d'un acte criminel semble manifestement oublier l'élément essentiel, que ça exclut tout geste avec une motivation essentiellement personnelle. » Merci. The Honourable Member for the Swan River Marquette. Mr. Speaker, um, and again, the members opposite the NDP, socialist parties, always make excuses for terrorists. They don't call them ter terrorists. They make, they do go, they use convoluted language all the time to somehow excuse what these evil people do. On this side of the house, on the, the difference between, you know, the, we as conservatives and the, the far left and the left over there, we actually believe that evil exists and evil needs to be confronted. And that is what we are doing with our actions and our legislation, Mr. Speaker. Uh, questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Burnaby Doug. Oh, the honor sorry, the Honourable Member for uh, Winnipeg North. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And, you know, the other day, the uh, Liberal Member from uh, Vancouver had brought forward, I believe it was uh, 
uh, C-622, which was a, a bill to provide uh, oversight. And there's no doubt there's a, a great deal of interest uh, in regards to uh, ensuring that there are certain rights that are in fact being uh, protected and it's a, it's a good way also, Mr. De uh, Mr. Speaker, in terms of just holding everyone into, into check. Uh, so my question to the member is, is that it, it would appear as if uh, the government is not going to be voting in favour uh, of the oversight role uh, that the bill is being proposed to do. And my question to the member is, does, does he, what what, to what degree does he believe it's important that the Parliament of Canada have oversight over the many different agencies that are that are there to protect society? That's a good question. The Honourable Member for Dauphin Swan River Marquette. I uh, thank Mr. Speaker. I thank my Honourable Friend for his qu question. I think that the uh, current levels of oversight that uh, we have right now are adequate. Uh, it's important that there be oversight of security and police agencies. But again, Mr. Speaker, I think uh, this government has struck, struck the right balance in that regard. Uh, questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Burnaby Douglas. Mr. Speaker, and I listened to uh, my colleague's speech with great interest. And I, I uh, had the opportunity to visit the uh, mosque in Burnaby on, on Saturday night, which has been connected with some of these events. And speaking with the new imam there, and as well as the head of the BC Muslim Association, uh, what's happening uh, in many parts of Canada is that the rather inflammatory language that is being used by the other side is unfortunately splashing onto the rest of the Muslim community. So I'm wondering if the member might care to comment on that and perhaps apologize for some of his inflammatory remarks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, member for Dauphin Swan River Marquette. We, we applaud the members of all, uh, the lead leaders and members of all religious communities who are, who are confronting these kinds of activities. They deserve our praise and our honour for what they uh, do. And I'm sure that the uh, mosque that the member visited uh, acts in that particular manner. However, Mr. Speaker, it is very important that we do everything we can to ensure that radicalization does not occur. And again, I want to thank the cultural and religious communities in this country for stepping up to the plate and doing what needs to be done in this regard.